Transmitting radio from the 18th Venice Film Festival. I'm Angela Cherby here with Neo Sora and Bill Kirsten for the film Riki Sakamoto Opus. First of all, I need to thank you personally for the film because you gave the world the opportunity of watching Riki for the one last time, playing all his best music. And how was the, the, the building of the film? I was convincing him, he was convincing him to do this, knowing that it would, would have been his last appearance. Uh, actually, it came the other way around because it was his <laughs> and his team's idea to do it. Um, so there was no convincing that we had to do. The, uh, uh, it's really, it's really m wonderful and painful at the same time to watch. Wonderful because the music it is wonderful. Painful because you know that it's the last time that you can see him and that we, there will be no longer uh, music by him. Uh, did you get this the sensation while you were filming it? So was this kind of ultimate quality of the of the film influencing your way of filming it? Um, of course, we all were very aware of the fact that this could be his last mm -hmm. performance um, while we were shooting it. But you know, when we're actually there with him and he's playing uh, so in such a lively way with so much energy. Um, you don't necessarily think about that too much as you're as we were filming him, and so um, I don't know if it influenced it too much. Um, although of course there was a sense of fatality to the project mm. to begin with. I think for us, he couldn't do a lot of takes, so there was the attention to being prepared to capture everything that occurred, and I think that sort of focus and attention um, finds its way into the final film. It's, it's, it looks like he was getting m more relaxed while the, while the performance was going on. At the end. At least he was smiling at the end. It was more was um, more into the event itself. Besides w what was happening around him, was it true? I mean, did you did you feel that they, that he was enjoying it more and more while it was going on? Perhaps um, I think. You know, when you get into the groove of shooting over the course of eight or nine days, um, you get to, you're more used to um, how the day goes. And so there could be a little bit of that. But at the same time, there's a remarkable um, ability for Sakamoto to just switch off everything um, when he's playing the music. And I think um, you can tell in the film as well that there are just moments where he's just purely enjoying um, the music as he's playing it. Um, and I think those kinds of things just is allow, allows him to mm, bring up a lot of energy from his body that was a little bit um, frail. Yeah. In terms of image, how did you work? Because I mean, you, you were in a studio, so, so the works uh, like um, uh, a very restricted possibilities of shooting because it was, I mean, th those were the spaces. How did you work together with Neo as a um, DOP to capture it in this way. Also, I noticed a lot, all the specific, um, uh, you know, uh, particulars on the glasses, the, 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 the stand, everything was very thoughtful. Thank you very much. So um, I was the, 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 the creative process visually. Um, we went through every song beforehand because Neo incredibly got the set list early enough for us to do so and then started planning sequences of long takes. And then once we saw the space, we realized that one of the only possibilities for lighting was to get sort of a balloon light that had to be shipped from Singapore. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we were able to kind of make our plan. And then because we only recorded a few songs per day, we could dial the lighting and the camera movement very specifically for each song to kind of capture the physicality and the presence to the best of our ability. I see. How many days did you shoot? Uh, eight or nine, eight uh, or I nine. believe nine. And how many takes per song, if, if, if it can be said? Between one to three. Yeah. Because did, I mean, I was, I was curious to um, ask you if the set list was played in the, in, in the right, and you, sh you shot in the right order of the set list, or you, then the ending, the, the, I mean, the editing was like mixed up. It was largely played in the order, but there were certain instances where um, the setting of the camera for a two songs that comes uh, not uh, in order mm -hmm. um, just dictated the fact that he should play uh, 
it out of sequence. And so there were some, but largely speaking, it was very much in order. You know, at the screening yesterday, uh, the press screening yesterday night, there was like a religious silence. It was like, like a mystical experience for everybody. And very rarely at the end, of people was applauding and people stayed there until the very end of the credit. So we probably we needed to take it in, you know, mm -hmm. it was really, it was really something kind of magical. So uh, thanks a lot for that. Thank you. Thanks Thank a lot you. to Neo, Neo Sora and Bill Kirsten, uh, specifically director and DOP of Ryuki Sakamoto Opus here from the Venice Festival. Thanks again. I'm Angela Cherby for Fred, the Festival Insider. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.